Kevin, when it comes to the competitiveness of the four new teams coming from the Pac-12, do you think there's a realm in which two or three of these teams wind up in the top even five of this new conference? Yeah, I think honestly, two of the best teams in the Big 12 are currently under the Pac-12 logo. Um, I'm going to be honest. I think Utah and Arizona, um, assuming Utah gets everybody back and there's health, um, obviously they were yeah. decimated by the injury this year. I think they lost like 15 to 20 players to injury. It was the craziest thing. Arizona is trending in the right direction. Utah is always going to be good. So I feel like they are automatically going to be competitive. Um, Arizona State will get there eventually. I feel like Kenny Dillingham still has a ways to go. Mm-hmm. And then Coach Prime in Colorado, you, I assume it's going to be better. Um, let's just like look at it from a holistic standpoint. They had the worst offensive line in college football. Yes. If it's average, they should be fine, right? That That's just my thinking. But yeah, I think realistically the Big 12's down. Um, I love what Texas Tech is doing in the portal, by the way. Shout out to the Red Raiders. The Big 12 might run through Lubbock next year. I'm not even joking. Yeah. It might be for real this time. Um, I like what Kansas, State, Kansas State's doing with Avery Johnson. Um, I also look at a program like in, in Baylor. Uh, not Baylor, sorry. sorry. Not Baylor. Not sorry, Baylor, sure. sorry. I saw Baylor in my head and I was like, no, that's not it. Uh, <laughs> um, Oklahoma State is always kind of yeah. just there. Yeah. And I don't know if they're going to be as good as they were this year, but they're just always there. And so there's a lot of good teams, I would say. But I think those two are the ones that are the best. Is there an adjustment process coming into a new conference? Do you think as these four move into the Big 12, whether it be geographically, new travel, new teams, new culture? Because look, 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 the MAC plays a lot different than the AAC and the AAC plays different than the SEC, who plays different than the Big 10. This is a different playing style and a different culture of football. Moving in, will there be a struggle to win on the field as these four adjust? Oh, that's a great question. Honestly, if it was like the big 12 of 2015, where it was like constantly yeah. 75 to, to 65, I would say yes, because I feel like obviously the Pac-12 offenses haven't always been as prolific, but the big 12, while people don't admit it, has played some defense lately. They, they've yes. been throwing up the, the white picket fence, playing some D. And so I don't think it's going to be the craziest adjustment. Um, I think the biggest adjustments actually come in recruiting. Um, all these new schools have new markets that they could are new. Um, hotbeds that they could attract so they could go to Orlando they could come to Dallas more they could go to all the cities in Texas so I don't think there's going to be a crazy adjustment Um, maybe just like learning your new opponents I think that's the adjustment because realistically a lot of these teams don't play um, outside of Baylor and Baylor and Utah who've been playing the past couple years but it's kind of one of those things where I don't think it's going to be like a worldly difference but I do think it's going to be like a recruiting getting familiar with opponents type of thing So we just saw four teams come from outside the power five ranks into the big 12 and they really struggled. Do you expect there to be, did you, do you from an outsider's perspective think that that is just because they weren't power five, that's why they couldn't adjust or is there part of that? Oh, we're in a new conference. Uh, That's I think the instance for those new teams, they were all kind of coming off of seasons where they weren't, what they were, you know, yeah. so like okay. Cincinnati, yeah. Cincinnati was not fresh off a playoff run. They were like a year removed from the playoff. Mm-hmm. Um, BYU was kind of in this little period of mediocrity, I guess we could say. Yeah. Um, UCF was not fresh off their national title game, unfortunately. And then Houston was, I won't say like a, they were middle pack, I guess. Trending down. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So none of them were like trending in the right direction. So I think that's kind of more of a factor. Um, obviously, they didn't have power five rosters yet, um, which I think is a recruiting thing, which helped them yep. um, when they come to the Big 12. So I think it's more so like the way they came in. So like Arizona State, I expect them to struggle just because it's year two of a rebuild. Um, Colorado, I don't think they're going to be winning at all but I think they'll be better, but I think there's going to be, we're not going to be in week or whatever seven it was when none of them had won a game yet. I don't think that's going to happen this year or next year. Yeah, it shouldn't at least let's, let's hope not. Uh, with with these squads, these four that come in, I, w- I do want to hone in on Arizona for a second because they finished ranked higher than anybody else of those four this year and now play Oklahoma. Uh, I, I am floored at what Jed Fish has done already at Arizona. Are they now because they're ranked, they're, they're the highest ranked team of the new four. Are they the team to beat? I think so. Yeah, right now they are. Um, wow. They have a young quarterback. They have a great receiving um, corps. And then they also kept their coach, which was like yeah. as soon as UCLA was rumored to be moving on from from Chip, it was like, OK, Jed Fish, welcome back to UCLA. Like they yeah. had the graphics ready. They had everything. And so they have everything. They're trending in the right direction. Uh, and they have a lot less questions. And I would say like Utah does. Utah's like, is Brand Kuthi going to return? Um, are we going to get the receivers we need? Arizona is just trending in the right direction. So I think they're the hottest team in college football. I said that 
every week on my show for like the last month of the season, I was like, people don't understand this Arizona yeah. team is really good. And I think it's going to carry over. Um, Jed fish has gone from one and 11 to five and seven to now, whatever their record is. I think it's nine and um, no eight and four. So that sounds right. So they're constantly trending up and that's a great thing. We'll close it here before we get into Colorado and just Colorado. Will these four teams run the new big 12? Oof, run the new big 12. I think no. The Big 12, for the most part, is going to be a conference full parody. Um, there's no more Oklahoma. Um, as much as Texas like wants to assume or wants to feel like they were running the Big 12, they weren't. But Oklahoma one good year, one good year. They were running it, you know. Um, but Oklahoma ran the Big 12 for I think it was a seven years, six years. Yeah. I don't see a team doing that. Uh, yeah. this conference is so big. This conference is so uh there's so many solid teams. I don't think there's an elite program in the Big 12 right now. Um, I think that some could get there. Um, some are heading in that right direction, but I would say it's going to be more often than not. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a different big 12 championship matchup every year. So to run the big 12, no, but if you ask me which teams I think will consistently compete in the big 12, it'd be Utah. It'd be Arizona. And it'd probably be Colorado eventually assuming coach prime doesn't leave and go elsewhere. But yeah. Yeah. Let's talk Colorado up next, Kevin, and whether or not they can become the new star of this league as they begin their trek through the transfer portal. But first, we'll hear from our valued sponsor, Prize Picks, right here on Locked On Big 12 and Locked On Buffs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is where I go to make money. It's easy. I sit on my couch, I go boop, 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 money. You just you find, you know, like two little things like LeBron and, and Travis Kelsey. Everybody knows who they are. You parlay together a combination of their receptions and three pointers made. And if it's 10 and a half and they get 11, you win money there. You could sit down on your couch. You put $10 on something and then bam, you win 250 bucks. It is that easy. You can play alongside Meek Mill. See what Meek Mill's doing. I don't know what that is, but maybe you do. And you can see what they're doing. You can bet on whatever they bet on. You have a reboot policy. Your guy gets hurt in the first half, doesn't return in the second half. Bam. Reboot. That's, that's it. You don't lose money because of it. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Go to prizepicks.com forward slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Again, prizepicks.com forward slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a deposit match up to $100. That is all at Prize Picks. <laughs> 